we're yes. back. We're live. We're here at 4 o'clock. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, we do our flagship show on energy with the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And uh, it's called Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. We are committed to clean energy here on this show. Today, we're going to talk about the outcomes of the 2017 legislature with uh, me and my co-host, uh, Mina Morita of Energy Dynamics, and our guests, Jeff Michalina of Blue Planet Foundation and Leslie Cole Brooks of Distributed Energy Resources Council. Welcome to the show, all of you guys. Thanks, Thank Jay. Great Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had an interesting session. I guess you could almost call it a day here. It's about done, so we should talk about outcomes. And you had some stuff you wanted to inquire about, Mina. Right. Well, first of all, a little bit about how we're going to proceed in the month of May is sort of divide the show up into the watchers, the makers, mm -hmm. and then the implementers. Mm -hmm. And so today we're, we're um, starting off with two key watchers at the legislature, uh, Leslie Cole Brooks, Brooks and, and uh, <laughs> Jeff Nicolina. <laughs> um, Leslie is with the Distributed Energy Resources Council of Hawaii. She's the executive director, and Jeff is the executive director of Blue Planet Foundation. So I want to start off with Leslie. So what were your um, priority bills at the at the legislature this year? Um, well, first, thanks for having me. Um, mm -hmm. It's great to be able to talk about it, even though it was kind of a sad session this session. Um, I didn't realize I was a watcher either. <laughs> so um, The watchbird uh, watches. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, there were three main bills we were interested in. Um, two of them were storage, energy storage incentive bills. Mm -hmm. One of them would have revamped the existing renewable energy investment tax credit to in, uh, right now, you can incorporate storage, but it changed the structure so that you can install storage as a standalone, say for a commercial system, or you could in include it with a distributed PV system. And the other one would have, the other incentive bill would have allowed um, using some of the GEMS funds as a rebate. Mm -hmm. So those were two competing ideas with the, the same hope for result, but different strategies. Mm -hmm. um, those were very important to us, trying to bring down the cost so we can really move forward with this technology. Mm -hmm. And then the other bill was a, kind of a humble little bill, but very, very important. And it would have given an appropriation to pay for trainers to come to Hawaii and help the counties with inspections for renewable energy installations. It's just um, changed so much. Um, I think that the inspectors are trying to keep up with what they see in the field, and it's, it's, uh, it's a tough job, and they don't have the resources they need. So this would have given some money to bring in a trainer, somebody from you know the National Electrical Code, to say, this is what we've got now, and this is what we look for. So, so I guess given that. Um uh, bills have to be decked by Friday evening that all of these died in conference committee and didn't move forward. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, the inspection bill didn't make it to conference, but the other two did. Mm -hmm. So we made it to Friday at 3.15 and 4.15. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's, 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 that's as close as we got this session. Very right. close. Um, really work with stakeholders to get on the same page so we didn't have a lot of different, you know, ways of doing it. You get too many cooks in the kitchen and then it can implode, you know. Uh -huh. But um, still, it's, uh, it's not easy to get bills yeah. through. So. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? I, I'm unfortunately in the same, same situation and it, yeah. it's so frustrating. We had so many good energy bills this session uh -huh. uh, and it came down to the last, last hour. And, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're an hour away or two months away, it's the same outcome, right? <laughs> right. It's not horseshoes, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so. the, frust the frustration is really, um, I mean, we're on this journey to 100% in Hawaii. And uh, we need policies to help, you know, clear the path, to help catalyze some of the change we need. Um, these are difficult, complex issues. I mean, it's really evolved mm -hmm. over the last uh, decade or two. Um, but we need to take action if we hope to retain our leadership you know, position on clean energy. Mm -hmm. so, so I want you to give a summary of some of the bills that were important to um, your organization. But the next question after that, you know, really I think we should be thinking about is, are there alternatives to legislation? Because these are so complex issues, do we really need laws um, to deal with it? So, yeah, it's a fair yeah. question. Uh, so I, we had a, a whole host of bills, but I'll focus on mm -hmm. three. 
um, and they fall into this, this camp of journey to, to 100%. Uh, the first is to just clarify our, our renewable portfolio standard, mm -hmm. uh, make sure 100% means 100%, make sure we get the equation right. That was a good bill. It was you a good know, bill supported by the it state. It was basic math, that's what we always thought, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then alongside that, um, making sure our whole energy system is moving towards 100%. So we had a, a measure looking at our, our gas system and seeing if we could set targets for them to uh, mm -hmm. incrementally improve towards 100%. Uh, and then the big bill was um, uh, looking at our transportation system, because that is our largest source of greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the state. And unfortunately, we're not making good progress. We uh, mm -hmm. increased gasoline use last year by 2%, uh, even though we made good progress on the renewable energy mm -hmm. side. Um, and part of the, the challenge, we think, is we don't have that target. We don't have a, a planning target for eventually we're going to wean ourselves from fossil fuel. Uh, so we thought lining, aligning that target with our 100% uh, RPS made sense. It's easier to solve the two problems together than separate. And put that target out there so we can start to you know, think of infrastructure, think of the, the planning uh, and the collaboration we need to do to achieve 100% uh, for renewable transportation. Uh, but similar to you, uh, we were in that, that last meeting and, mm. um, and we just couldn't, couldn't get it uh, over the finish line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess um, with this, you know, I, the, the first question is, can you still move forward with these concepts um, not using legislation? Is, is that a possibility? I, I know with the 100% renewable uh, redefinition that there was a working group set up to build um, a consensus position onto methodology definitions. And so apparently that didn't move forward, but you know, are, are there key working groups that need to be developed as we move forward um, in, in uh, getting greater um, acceptance of some of these concepts? I'll, I'll say yes, and I think that, that that burden is on us to help build that you know tent of, uh, of folks, um, help to show folks that this is possible. This is the trend where we're heading, uh, mm -hmm. and bring uh, folks who might be somewhat skeptical of that into into the fold. You mentioned the the, R, the RPS bill, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's one of the frustrations because that's the go-to of the legislature, right? Well, mm -hmm. let's work on it in the interim. Let's kick it to a working group. Uh, that happened in 2016. Mm -hmm. We had the working group, had consensus, and then it was kind of a fragile consensus and it fell apart during the session. Mm -hmm. And so the thinking is, well, let's have a working group and eventually we have to make a decision and, and, mm -hmm. and go with it. So, um, sorry. So on, what do you think were the um, obstacles or the challenges into, you said, it, first of all, I think the key word was fragile. So what was the obstacle in, in, in moving a bill like that forward? Uh, that's a fair question. And uh, I mean, this is probably longer than the show allows, but for that particular <laughs> yeah. measure, um, I mean, a lot of these issues, uh, we are dealing with a legacy or incumbent industries, um, and we're looking at transitioning to a new you know, landscape. And so it is a challenge for some of the businesses to see how they you know, are, remain relevant in this new future. Mm -hmm. So there's some resistance there that we have to overcome. Um, and part of it is, is showing how this, this is evolving, this is changing. There's still an opportunity for you to have a viable business in this future, mm -hmm. but it may not be in the current, mm -hmm. current you know, form. iteration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, a big challenge. So Leslie, a lot of your, um, the bills that you're concerned about dealt with money. Right. So That's are there alternatives a, a to, <laughs> <laughs> alternatives to uh, tax credits, uh, rebates that could help incentivize, um, you know, rate design. Uh, that's right. out of the realm of right. the legislature. Yeah. So, so where do you see that going? Exactly, that's, you kind of already answered your own question there. Right? <laughs> it asked and answered um, that our focus now, and it's it's been ongoing, but you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to do as many things as we can to relate to service catalysts, like Jeff was talking about, to, to move things forward and to not have these big gaps and pauses while the state decides on policy and then the industry leaves the state and then we're going to have to start again. So um, there's a few things that I'm actually really excited about I think that will be a big help and one of them is the demand response program that's mm -hmm. a docket right now. Mm -hmm. um, we just put in our final statements of position. The application is in. There's a pilot going on and the goal is, or the, the not the goal, it's actually the scheduled start date is the end of this year. 
So what that would do is for customers that have energy storage um, connected to PV or not, you know, commercial, residential, a wide variety of different types of installations can provide grid services. Mm -hmm. um, these are system level grid services and they'll get payment for that. So it's, um, it's part of the whole new business model of how we're going to get to 100%. Right. It's not just centralized, it's now utility scale and distributed and commercial and residential. So that will be a way to help bring down costs because it's another way to um, you know, speed up the, the payment of your installation that if you can say provide fast frequency response or be available during emergencies, things like that. So we are looking to that. And then the, another docket, which is also examining the market track issues. Um, that can be a little slower sometimes. So um, what it is about the DR docket that I really like is that there is a deadline and that we're looking at it right. actually happening. And there's a pilot going on right now where the aggregators are showing how they can take 100 people and put them all together and they create a a, a product that is available to provide these services. So it's really right. pretty exciting and cool. Yeah. So, I, that's you know. one of the things that we need is more pilots. This is yeah. the you know, quietest <laughs> I've seen, Jay. So. Well, no, I, I'm just <laughs> listening, but I, I do have some thoughts and comments. I mean, I think really an important question you posed is, what are the alternatives to having the legislature do this? Because we've seen over this year anyway that the legislature doesn't treat this as a priority. Otherwise, they would have reached conclusions about it. Uh, they would have come to some policy. And we need the policy. We need to move ahead. So you, you ask legitimately, you know, what other methodologies, what other organizations are available to give us leadership decisions and policy? Um, and let me, let me spoon through a few of them. Mm -hmm. One is the governor. But, uh, you know, he's sort of detached on this. He comes up with comments about Nextera and about LNG, and they come from nowhere particularly. Uh, so that's, that's not a, a proven method of determining policy in this administration. Another one is DBED, but I think DBED is good at conferences rather than determining policy. Um, there is no energy authority, and some people have said, might even say in the future, that for the lack of an alternative, maybe we should have one. Um, there's, there's the PSIP, and. Uh, and there's, uh, there's the PUC. You know, the PUC is uh, not going to act on that right away, too bad. Um, but that could help us to you know, sort of clear the air about what our policy should be, where we're going, how we're going to reach 2045 and 100%. So, I mean, I make my little list. I spoon through my little list, and I don't come up with anything. Um, where? How, how can we answer her question? What are the alternatives? Must we wait for the legislature to realize this is a very important subject? What are we going to do? Do we just, you know, self-help? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> self-help. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I mean, um, we, we, part of our, our job is to help convince mm -hmm. the legislature, have that overwhelming support, and give them permission to take action or, yeah. you know, neutralize the, maybe some of the, the, la the, the resistance. Um, there are other mechanisms, though, and, and we're thinking through, you know, we have the counties. The counties can act mm -hmm. on some of these issues. We had some efficiency bills at the legislature. One simple one that I, I think people might laugh at, but um, you walk down Waikiki and all the doors are open. They're air conditioning the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, New York City dealt with this uh, two years ago, passing a fairly draconian law saying you must close your, it's called shut the front door in uh, New York, and you get a big penalty if you're air conditioning the sidewalk. So we had a bill like that this session. Of course, it didn't go anywhere. Mm, did it um, even get heard? It, it did, uh, did get heard. Oh, it did. Yeah. It did. Um, but the, uh, why well, didn't God, that bill go God somewhere? God bless him. <laughs> why but, all of these bills we've been again, talking we're, about we're didn't go to, anywhere? Does it really take a lot to do that? So that's what, that's what we're getting at. Too. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. there, there are, we can do some peer pressure. We can do some, you know, bring some attention to it. Uh, we did, you know, canvas all of Waikiki and, you know, hand out things saying, please close, your, close it for the climate. Maybe we like it. street theater when you find you have a whole gang of people and they'll all like right. fall down, you know, in front of the, like, you know. I, I got to tell you, one year I was in the Kamehameha Day Parade. <laughs> It was such a relief to go through <laughs> Kiki with the was, air conditioning. Oh, there was the a considerable, was oh, there was okay. a drop yeah. in the temperature, and plus it was shaded too because of tall buildings. <laughs> so that's a lot of energy. <laughs> you, want yeah. right. you want relief? I'm going to yeah. give you one minute yeah. of relief. We're going to take a break right okay. now. Bingo! Watch that. Okay. Okay. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. 
Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech on thinktechhawaii.com, which broadcasts five live talk shows from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams our earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Okay, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're talking about the outcomes of the 2017 legislature uh, with my co-host, Mina Morita of Energy Dynamics, Chef Michalina of Blue Panda Foundation, Leslie Cole Brooks of the um, uh, Distributed Energy Resources Council. So to carry on with that same notion, something you said a minute ago, Jeff, and that is, um, you know, it's up to the industry to approach the legislature and explain the priorities. You guys represent, well, the industry and the, and the public, public service groups around it. And so um, this, you know, I think, I think inherent in this discussion is we were, we collectively who would like to see renewable energy come about, we're not successful in this legislature. And we can think of uh, other ways to do it at all, but the reality is in Hawaii A, you need the legislature to do a lot of things. Not everything, but a lot of things. So here we are looking at the track to next year, okay? What do you have on your minds about next year? How would you change your approach? What would you do? How would you explain and make the legislature understand in an election year, as I remember? <laughs> mm. How would you make mm. them understand? They gotta take mm. some risks. They gotta take some affirmative steps. They gotta get out there and make this happen. And that means pass those bills. What would you do to make that happen? Well, what we're doing right now, and it's interesting you bring that up about it, it's an election year because that's already already on the plate. Of their legislators are going to want to do something that looks really good. Um, they, I mean, I hope they always want to do that, but this year it especially matters because um, everyone's going to be looking at that. If you could say, "Look what I passed! Look what I did!" That's fabulous. So, um, how do we do that? So for us right now, it's the dust is still settling. Um, the first thing to do is to find out um, at the very end what happened in that conference committee. So I plan on visiting the, the different conferees and sitting down with their bill and saying, could you just honestly tell me what was it about this bill that gave you heartburn? <laughs> you know, I've heard different things. And um, so that's the first thing is just to sit down. It's off session. You have more time. During session, it's... Are there Great, people out there yeah. that oppose these, actively oppose these bills? Uh, huh? Yeah. I mean, who who yeah. might oppose renewable energy? Who well, might think, oppose the development? Well, I think, you know, again, with, with the, um, especially the storage bills, you know, there's, there's a cost attached, you know, and there's always this struggle to, to balance the budget. And I think a, an, another major issue was some equity issues that, you know, you're looking at the same pool, pool of people who have taken advantage of rooftop solar, um, electric vehicles, and now moving to storage. The same group of people getting, getting consistently getting um, benefits. Um, so, so if, yeah, the cost of it is is would be a concern, and you know, it gets down to the budget. You know, if there's extra money, and they want to pass it around, then. It's a good thing, but if the budget's tight, something's got to go on the chopping block. And there's know? uncertainty. So I don't think anyone comes out and says, we don't like renewable energy. It's not that. It's, it's more the uncertainty of, well, it's revenue neutral according to our analysis, and we've you know, put in things that are more anecdotal to say, even if you don't have the exact number, this is how it's designed. But you don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. And that can make the, the money committees uncomfortable because mm -hmm. they say, yeah, well, you what, have if, what, if, analysis. what if this <laughs> ran away, you know, and, and it's not that. So, um, and, we, and we did see it run away with rooftop um, solar and, uh, you know, how the incentives were applied there, the tax credits were applied there. And unfortunately for these kinds of cost issues, we don't see the impact until two, sometimes three years down the road because you know how returns are filed and that lag. Um, but I, I would go back to the, the problem, I don't know if you guys agree with me, is that, is that this is an important initiative. 
And we haven't made the kind of, I mean, you say we have leadership position, Jeff, but, you know, we could have a much bigger, better leader, leadership position. Um, mm -hmm. So let me, let me put it this way. You're walking in the park, and it's July, August, okay? And you run into your favorite legislator <laughs> who was on that committee, for example, <laughs> and you're going to have a schmooze with him. And I'm him. Okay, for this, this we're going to role play. Oh, great. <laughs> what do you say to me about your practice. reaction to this session? What do you say to me about how I should conduct myself in next year, the election year? What, what kind of moral suasion do you apply? Jay, it's so great you got elected finally after all these years. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we could support your campaign. Uh, no, you know, I think it's, uh, you, you can appeal to the, 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 I mean, clean energy is really, uh, uh, I hate to say populist, but it's a popular issue among uh, Hawaii residents um, and, and visitors. People, it, it matches the image of the state. Uh, and I think riding on, on that and, and talking about this leadership position that we have, the jobs that it creates, um, and then the, the, the moral imperative around climate, I think that's mm -hmm. more and more uh, front and center to folks. I mean, we've had some pretty odd weather here. Um, and it's only going to get worse. We have a small window. Uh, but some of these things, we were asking this year for a planning target for 100% renewable transportation. And I think people look to their leaders for that sort of visionary, you know, direction setting and leadership. Yeah, Hawaii ought to take a position that eventually we're going to wean ourselves from fossil fuel. Uh, anyone who's been in an electric car or something similar knows the power that, wow, this isn't something, this isn't Jetsons. This is here today in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, so, so asking leadership to, to set that vision. But, but it, you know, with the 100% um, fuels, renewable fuels, is that vision too small and not inclusive mm. enough? Because we're not, you're, you're limiting, limiting it to moving towards renewable fuels but, and, and uh, electric cars, but the chatter these days is on autonomous cars. Mm -hmm. You know, so should we expand to look at the whole platform of transportation? You mean a plan? <laughs> That's what she means. I know she means that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, That's a fair, fair point. I think, I mean, it's the chicken the egg thing. Do we set the goal first or do we make the plan first? And that was some of the discussion in the but legislature. Is, but is that goal a little too limiting in trying to, um, when we're trying to develop the platform? Mm. Uh, I mean, just, just for clarity, the goal was simply to eliminate fossil fuel from ground transportation. So whether, mm -hmm. whatever that may end up to be, autonomous or hoverboards or, you know, <laughs> flux capacitors, we don't, we don't know. But at least setting that, we're not going to burn fossil fuel for ground transportation. So, so I, can see, I can see it being a real, um, a faster move for, um, again, the urban areas. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at the rural areas and the, their choices of, of trucks that may not have you know electric options or or limited public transportation i mean so how how do you how do you give confidence to um all stakeholders in this that the vision is big enough to be inclusive and uh, varied enough that there is customer choice and we all know about customer choice on the electricity mm -hmm. side but you know, you're really talking about customer choice on, on the transportation side, where it really is a market design. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's a complex issue. It so is. how yeah. do how do we get down where, um, you know, we can sh all share a bigger common vision mm -hmm. in moving forward and really design well, the policy? Let me offer a thought and see if these guys agree. Mm -hmm. It is an election year next year. Mm -hmm. This could be an election issue, and you know, you could. <clears throat> explain we haven't made the kind of progress we hope to make, that the 2017 legislature didn't do anything. Uh, we need to do something. And will those who are willing to get behind this and make it a high priority step forward? Because we want to know that when we vote one way or the other. Would this help? Can this be done? Or is this politically incorrect, uh, impolitic? I think you're on the, you're on the right path. It's, a, it's our challenge to make it that type of issue where folks are paying attention and they hold legislators accountable for their decisions. Yeah, Leslie? And they see, and, and not just that they adopt a position because they think they'll get elected, they adopt it because they know it's the right thing to do. And that's the challenge of breaking it down, especially for things that are more mm -hmm. complicated and, and explaining what it is. And I think a lot of times that's the problem is these, 
issues with energy and transportation. It's not just a simple two-minute conversation. It's about the it's money, complex. the analysis. It requires knowledge. It is. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, not, I don't want to throw the legislators under the bus that some, I think if, if I didn't understand something, I sure wouldn't vote for it, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're getting. So it's um, on us to, to break it down and explain it in a way where they see that this is the right thing to do. And I know I'm going to get reelected because people want to have renewable energy. See, so camera so. one over there, that's, that's the public. They're all out there <laughs> listening to you. Okay, okay so. why, don't you, why don't you give you a special message to them? What should they be doing thinking about? What should they be doing vis-a-vis -vis the legislature and their favorite legislators for next year? You should. Uh, this is the camera right here. <laughs> there it is. That's so weird. Um, call your legislator and say, I really care about the environment, and I care about Hawaii, and renewable energy, and renewable transportation, and those sorts of environmental issues are just top tier for me. So please do what you can next session to make it so. Jeff, how much of what she said do you agree with? 100%. <laughs> We're all about 100%. I know. And then, 100%, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the yeah. counterbalance. Yeah. You know, please, what yeah. about the person yeah. that said, uh, me finding a place to live next month and being able to pay my rent is important to me? You know, I care about the environment, but I care about, you know, where I'm going to live you know, having affordable housing. So I think, you know, these kinds of conflicting. Yeah. I, I don't think it has to conflict, though. I think, you know, there are But a lot it's of, always presented that way. And we, we mm -hmm. have to do a better job of aligning those mm -hmm. and showing that, you know, mm -hmm. our clean energy future can be the most affordable future. And even looking at electric vehicles today, I mean, there's certain models out there that compete or beat, you know, gasoline-powered mm -hmm. uh, vehicles. Uh, and that's only going to improve over time. So I'd like to think we're aligning that, you know, preferred societal outcome with our preferred climate outcome. The point, though, is that um, you've got to approach this, we've got to approach this on all the levels, on the governmental level, on the legislative level, and with the public, because mm -hmm. they ultimately are the ones most respected by the legislature. So let, it's time for us to go now. I can sing that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, can, can you summarize for us, Mina? What did we learn today? What, what's the takeaway here? It's, it's difficult. <laughs> it's harder Things than you are, thought. It's harder, it's than, harder you than, thought. than you thought, you yeah. know, and... and um, the reason for sort of breaking up into, you know, the watchers, the makers, and the implementers, you know, it, it comes down to implementation, you know, and, and, and that's how we progress, but it's having the right policies in place, which we're all working on, um, and hopefully together, and having a long-term vision and strategy. So, you know, we basically stay on the mark. We might have to make adjustments along the way, but, um, you know, we can only get there if we have a common vision and we can be able to articulate it. Thanks, Mina Marita, Energy Dynamics, my co-host, and the person who's going to shape the next three shows <laughs> here at Hawaii State, the State of Clean Energy. Uh, thanks, Jeff Michalina of Blue Planet Foundation, exactly. for all that you do, not just today. And I hope to come back soon. We'll talk some more about the same subject. Okay, Leslie Cole Brooks of Distributed Energy Resources Council. Thank you so much for what you th Thanks for coming down yeah, today. Sure thing. Hope you Great come back to be soon. Here. We'll do this yeah. again. Okay. Yeah. Aloha, you guys. It's always fun. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Yeah.